Their place is threatened. Lashing out, and I quote, is a way for a person to feel safe in a vulnerable situation. They might be rejected or abandoned. And again, I quote, <coughs> though some people lash out and regret it afterwards, some people seem to feel no remorse. This person wants to devalue, devalue you. In other words, to destroy you. Those quotes came from Dr. Monica Bor Borchel and a website on psychology. I want to remind you, the Bible taught us all of this stuff first. No doctor of psychology is going to teach us anything the Bible didn't teach us first. I want to go back to 1 John chapter 3. John cautions us about this in John's first general letter, 1 John chapter 3, and in verse 12. First John chapter 3 and verse 12, John says, We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not abide in love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. John is saying that this is a reaction. This psychological reaction of lashing out against someone who is doing good when you are caught doing evil is as old as time itself. In, and in fact, John even says that Cain did it because his own deeds were evil. And Cain did it because he was under the influence of Satan. Friends, I dare say the chief priest of the day, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, were jealous because their own deeds were evil. They were caught with their hand in the cookie jar. And they were in a defensive mode based on a response that Satan brought out of them. Two basic responses. As I mentioned from the beginning, two basic responses when we're confronted with a fault or sin in our lives. The first basic human instinct is the one that the scribes and the Pharisees had. To reject the correction and seek to devalue or destroy the person bringing the correction. The book of Proverbs has a lot to say on correction and instruction. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 29 says this, Because they hate knowledge and did not choose fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away and the, comp and the compassy of fool, complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and be at ease without dread of disaster. If we back up in Proverbs chapter 1 to verse 22, how long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their own scoffing and fools hate knowledge? As old as time itself, as old as creation and sin, is the lashing out at one who brings correction. 
The second, and this is what we should strive for, the second reaction, less common, but still it's a learned trait. The second reaction is to realize truth for what it is and embrace it to become a better person. While we're in Proverbs, Proverbs has so much to say on this. Proverbs 29 and in verse 11. Proverbs 29 and in verse 11, Solomon says, A fool gives vent to his spirit, but a wise man holds it back. In other words, if the scribes and Pharisees, or the chief priests and scribes had been wise, they would have held in check, not only physically, but mentally, held in check their evil thoughts. Proverbs 17 and verse 10, a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows to a fool. In other words, you could sit and beat a man who's stupid and he's not going to learn. But a man who is wise is going to take one rebuke and it's going to go deep into his heart and he's going to learn from that. While we're in Proverbs, I've got just a couple more verses for thought regarding this topic. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. And again in Proverbs chapter 9 and in verse 8. Do not reprove a scoffer, for he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Proverbs 10 and verse 8. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. With all of this in mind, why would we ever want to be offended? Why would we ever take offense at someone who has our best interest at heart, who is attempting to correct us? You know, the thing is, in Bible study, so many times, we'll be studying along with somebody, and they will be sitting there and learning until we come to a point where they have to make a decision. Are they going to change their life to match the scripture or are they going to reject the scripture in its entirety? Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21 says this, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. When we're corrected, friends, by someone in the church, it's not that that person means ill towards us. Nine times out of ten, they simply want what's best for us. And oftentimes, the Bible itself has a reason for us to be corrected. Oftentimes, we'll be reading along. If you're into daily Bible readings, maybe you've experienced this. You read along, and suddenly there's something that you read, that you're like, oh, I need to change something in my life. If you're here this morning, there's something you need to change in your life. Let's take a moment as we sing 662.